All right, guys, I'm here with Mr. Laurie Ayres, his official title, practitioner, lecturer, amazing clinical instructor, in my opinion. Uh, he's one of the head instructors for International uh, Institute of Classics in East Asian Medicine, ICEAM. And he's a pun expert. He's a cricket and tea expert and just an all round gentleman. So welcome, Laurie. Thank you. Hi, Simon. How's it going? Good, man. Good. Um, so what we're going to do, we're just talking about different formulas um, and obviously being a, um, a, a specialist, I would I would definitely put you in that category of the the, uh, the Shanhan Zabin Lun. Um, I've asked you to choose a particular formula and you've chosen uh, Chai Hu Gui Ji Gun Jiang Tan. Uh, any reason that you, that was the one that kind of struck you as the most important or the first one to speak about? Um, yeah, I mean, it was very difficult narrowing it down for a start. Um, because really through picking a formula, there's, you think about what area of physiology and pathology you want to focus on, whether it's, you want to focus on something that comes up a lot or something that's important to understand or, or something that's a bit unusual. And I think in, in Chai Hu Gui Jian Jiang Tang, it's quite, it's quite an important one to, to understand for a number of reasons. And one is because it treats uh, Xiaoyang disease and it treats one of the most chronic Xiaoyang patterns you can see. And I think Xiaoyang disease is something which is quite misunderstood, um, definitely under under diagnosed and under treated. And it's a very important thing to, to actually be able to understand and to treat um, for a number of reasons that I'll, I'll, I'll go into in a minute. And then when we come to Xiaoyang disease. Um, again, we could have picked many forms. The Xie Xin Tang, Fan Xia Xie Xin Tang, Gan Xia Xie Xin Tang, Sheng Sheng Xie Xin Tang, and so on. They're, they're another form which would sort of fit this category of, um, you know, important Xiaoyang diseases from more of a digestive aspect. But really pick Chai Hu Gui Gan Chang Tang because it's, it allows us to explore some elements of San Zhao physiology and um, what, what happens with chronic Xiaoyang disease and how that can mutate into into other commonly seen patterns as well. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, what? Um, tell us what's in the formula and, and um, you know the importance of those herbs and how you think they they work. Well, so Chai Hu Gui Ji Gan Jiang Tang. You see, as the name implies, as Chai Hu Gui Ji Gan Jiang. That's one of the really good things about Zhang Fengjing's formulas. He he calls it what it is. Mm. Um, so. He doesn't make up very weird names for it. So you have Choi Hu Gui Ji Gan Jiang. Um, as it's a Xiaoyang formula, it has Huang Chin. I mean, whenever you're treating Xiaoyang, you're using Huang Chin. Because you're treating the flaring of ministerial fire, and that's treated with Huang Chin. Mm. So you have the Huang Chin Choi Hu combination, which means that you are um, subduing the flare of ministerial fire, or rather, descending ministerial fire because the reason why ministerial fire flares is because it gets stuck. You see the yang moves from top to bottom through the sand gel. Um, it's born from the um, heart fire leaving by the pericardium, containing the fluids, and moving down through the sand gel. And it gets stuck if that ministerial fire is weak, and the strong yang sends weak yang floats. So if ministerial fire is weak at all, it gets stuck on its way down, and that's why there's a Shao Yang pathology. Shaoying is lesser Yang, it's a small Yang. So you only get into a Shaoying pathology if you have very weak Yang, or the because Shao Yang is the weakest of the Yang conformations, that's why it's the deepest the Yang conformation. So your Yang gets weak, it gets stuck on its way down through the San Zhao, and therefore, if fire isn't going down, it flares back up again. So that's why you need Huang Qin to actually grab that fire and pull it down through the sand gel. Huang Chin does this because it is a, it's a bitter flavour, mm. and bitter flavours go to yin, bitter flavours are yin, they go to matter. And this ministerial fire within the sand gel is contained within the fluids of the sand gel, which are earth nutritive. And remember, Huang Chin is um, you know, a yellow herb. It has that um, 
that sort of resonance with that nutritive through being yellow, through being bitter, grabbing that yin. So what Hongqin does, it grabs those fluids within which the fire is held and helps pull them down through the sun gel. So it restores the proper movement of fire. Mm. The other important thing to remember about Hongqin is that it's neutral. You could put it on mildly cold, but in the channel bent touching, it's neutral. So you're not actually clearing heat when you're descending this ministerial fire. You're actually um, just helping descend it on this proper fire, which you don't actually want to clear heat. Although Shaolin disease can show relatively big heat symptoms, it's because it's a small amount of fire that's stuck and flaring. So you don't actually want to damage that heat in any way. You just want to send it. Because if you damage that heat, you send the person into Tai Yin. The next step after the Shaoyang is Tai Yin. Because Shaolin pathologies, as I say, they're ministerial fire, stuck in fluids which are flaring up. So therefore, they're in damp heat. The fluids within which they're stuck are warmed up. If you clear heat, you turn those fluids from a damp heat to a cold damp, so you can move to a tiny pattern. So that's why Huang Qin is so important in the treatment of Xiaoyang, mm. um, because it grabs that fire, pulls it from top to bottom. And then in Chai Hu Gui Chigan Zheng Tang as well, we have Chai Hu, which is your secondary Xiaoyang treatment. Um, this ministerial fire, when it gets stuck, you can broadly put it in sort of two categories. You can say it's more more peripheral or you'd actually say more more sort of upper jaw so those fluids are stuck much more throughout the sand jaw but really the upper jaw and therefore you have to open the upper so that those fluids can descend and in those patterns we get more of the peripheral symptoms like the headache the fever the subcostal stuckness um and then the other possibility is they're stuck more on the epigastrium in the digestive system um, in the digestive system in the stomach and that's when you get the glomus and so on in that second scenario where they're stuck more on the epigastrium, that's more your Xiaoxin tanks when you're using a Huang Qin Huang Lian combination. So you still have that Huang Qin to descend the ministerial fire. Then you have Huang Lian to actually help grab and pull that down through the stomach. Um, chai Hu Huang Qin form, it's like Chai Hu Gui Jigan Zheng Tang, it's more peripheral and it's more global. And you can see this in, um, what is it? It's line to 230 or is it 231? I think it's 230 where it says that Chai Hu Tangs um, open the upper so that fluids can descend. So what Chai Hu does is it assists uh, descending the San Jia by opening the lungs. And again, it does that by being a bitter flavour, because bitter descends metal as per the Neijing. Um, but Chai Hu is a very, very mild bitter flavour. It's, it's, um, its flavour is very thin, and its chi is neutral. So its, it's chi is a bit more emphasised because its flavour is so thin. Flavour is more yin, chi is more yang. So if, if the herbs chi is more emphasized, it will have a slightly more yang action. So the nature of the flavour of chai fu is to descend because it's bitter. The nature of its neutral chi is to float a little bit. So what chai fu does, it floats to mildly open lungs and then descends. Mm. So it opens the lungs to depressurize the whole of the San Jiao, because remember the canopy of the lungs is the, the upper part of the San Jiao. So it, it floats to mildly depressurize that and then descends to actually help all that ministerial fire descend, so assisting Huang Qin in that action. Um, so you have that Chai Hu Huang Qin combination. Then we also have Guajia as well. Um, chai, chai Hu Guajia Gan Zheng Tang is not what you would call a, a pure Shang Yang disease, it's what you call a triple, triple Yang disease, so it involves pathology of all three Yang conformations. So in the original text this is a cold damage which has gone on for five or six days so that puts you in a sort of Xiaoyin or Xiaoyin Zhuiyin on the timeline so you've already got to the point where your yang has got quite depleted um, it's been going on for quite a while and then at that point the patient's been sweated which means they've lost yang um, their blood has cooled off a bit and then they've been purged which means their earth has also been damaged. So there's been a long timeline of disease and then a few mistreatments which have weakened yang and also damaged the earth. So all three yang confirmations have been affected because you've had something which resolves tai yang, but this is not a tai yang disease, so in that case, something will damage the yang is tai yang. Then you purge the patient, which will resolve the yang mean disease, but this isn't a yang disease, so that will just dry out the stomach. And then you have the shang pathology as well. So we have Guizhou in the formula. We strengthen the yang of tai yang. And then we have a very important combination, which is Tianhua Fen and Muli. 
And this forms the form of you Gualo know, Milisan, which you'll find in chapter three of the Jingwe, mm. the lily bulb seeds, by mm. her being. So when lily, when there's lily bulb seed thirst, you give Gualo Milisan. And this is um, this is very very important combination in this formula because this is what really treats that uh, that chronic sort of recalcitrant nature of the chronic Chagian disease. So. Tianhuafen is bitter. Um, it's bitter and cooling. Muli is salty and cold. Now, what's happened? What happens in a chronic Chagian disease is you get these repeated flares of ministerial fire. When ministerial fire flares, it flares on metal. Um, you know, standard five element dynamics. If any element becomes pathologically excessive, it will most likely invade the element which it controls. So, fire will invade metal. Um, minister of fire hits metal, heats up and dries out the fluids in the sand gel. And if that happens long term, those fluids will start to um, dry out and actually harden. And they can become locked up in the whole sand gel. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes the Chaihu Great Gigantian Tank Pattern so chronic and so difficult to resolve by itself. Because basically, the whole sand gel becomes hardened and congested. So the combination of Tianhuafen and Muli uses the salty softening of muli to break the hardness of water. Because remember, muli is a salty flavour, and salty flavours reduce water. Mm. Um, so it's, it's much like, you know, salty flavour producing water is much like putting salt on an ice cube. It will start to melt. It's the same way that salt is very, that very corrosive flavour. So it softens that, those hard fluids in the same gel. And then Tianhuafen helps cool down the heat that is uh, causing those fluids to dry out. Remember, Tianhuafen doesn't nourish fluids. Um, it just cools down the heat that's damaging fluids. I mean, if, you know, looking at other showering forms, if Tianhuafen nourished fluids, um, when Zhang Zhongjing modifies the Xiao Chaihu tank first, he takes out Bansha as Tianhuafen increases Renzhi. If Tianhuafen nourished fluids, you wouldn't need to increase the Renzhi. Um, and the reason I say that is because here you still have fluids congested in Sanjia. So you want to nourish fluids too much. And you can see that in Shaihu Great Gigantian Tang because there's no um, Datsao and no Renshin as there are in a lot of the other Shaihu Tangs. Mm -hmm. So here, we're actually breaking the congestion in the Sanjiao and cooling down the heat that's damaging those fluids. And then you have Ganjiang. Ganjiang is very important because, you know, Xiaoyang is one step away from Taiyin. As, as disease progresses, it starts at Taiyang. Next moves to Yang Ming as Yang gets weaker because Tai. The progression through the six confirmations is a damage to Yang, especially through the Yang confirmations, a damage to Yang. Tai Yang is the biggest Yang, as the name rather implies. It's your biggest ability to mount fever. It's not the biggest fever because you still have a lot of water in Tai Yang, but it's the biggest ability to mount fever. Then, as your Yang completes, you get to Yang Ming, which is dryness. That's why you have a big. That's why you see bigger fevers in Yang Ming. You have more floating Yang and less water, but your Yang is still depleted. And then, as your Yang gets even weaker, as your ability to mount a fever gets even weaker, then you get to Xiao Yang. And there, it's no longer a steady fever. It's alternating fever and aversion to cold. And that's got nothing to do with you know the pathogen winning and the body's qi winning and so on. We're not talking about pathogens walking into the body. We're talking about an initial strike damaging the body's function, and then the body's yang fails as it tries to restore function and calm. So you get to Xiao Yang. You have so little yang, you can't maintain a constant fever. So your body tries to warm up, tries to regain its physiology. And um, as it does, it gets closer to Yang Ming and Tai Yang. It gains heat, which manifests fever, but it can't move into Yang Ming. So the heat collapses and you get a version of cold. And it tries to warm up again can't quite stay in Yang Ming, and then you get a bit collapsed and you get a version of cold. So that's why you get alternating fever and aversion to cold in Xiao Yang. It's the lesser Yang. Now the thing is, one step beyond that is you're no longer actually able to generate that fever before it collapses again. So now you have no Yang left to warm your hollow organs. So you've now moved from um, Xiao Yang into Tai Yin. You've actually you're actually now Yang deficient. It's always, always very important to protect against that step from Xiaoyang into Taiyin whenever treating Xiaoyang or whenever treating Yang confirmation, but especially when treating 
um, Xiao Yang, because the one thing you should never do is let somebody progress from the hollow organs into the solid organs, from an excess pattern to a deficiency pattern. Um, this is why, you know, this is the problem when you see a lot of people give forms like yin chow san or so on for sore throats or what what they they see as a wind heat invasion. I mean, it's very, very, very rare you'll see a wind heat invasion because that means that the person will have needed to have been struck by um, an external influence higher than their body temperature. Um, it can happen. I'm not saying it never happens, but generally it won't. You know, you see people treating somebody with a bit of a sore throat and fever in winter where it's, you know, I don't know, two or three degrees outside, and they're saying this is a wind heat. It's like, no, you've still got you know, a good um, 34 degrees to go before it comes anywhere near wind heat kind of conditions outside. So this is kind of the problem there. That, that kind of severe cooling treatment will get rid of the heat symptoms very, very quickly, but that's because you've damaged the air, and that's why you're left with loads of phlegm. And this is why I said earlier it's very important that you use bitter neutral or bitter mildly cold um, herbs like chai fu huang jing you know shenong ben sa jing they're neutral later they became known as a bit more mildly cold but that's why it's important it's only neutral to mildly cold so you're not actually clearing heat you're descending heat you're pulling it down to the lower restoring its correct movement you're not actually clearing heat because the problem is if you clear heat you damage yang and you push the person into tai yin um, which then means you damage the yang at center what happens then is as you damage the yang at center obviously it's set to can't hold um, the the yang center can't actually hold the yin the fluids of the earth in they start to collapse down and then you get diarrhea and then eventually your center cools off so much you get diarrhea with you know separation of water and grains your hands and feet get cold and you've got the shao yin so in shao yang we want to stop that progression to tie in because we don't want our solid organs to cool off because next step up that shao yin and then you know in shao yin you either die or you're able to actually start to regenerate a bit of yang, build blood and move back to drain, um, which is, you know, a good progression from showering. But we, we don't want to make that initial step from showering into tie-in because then you've sent someone from an excess to a deficient state, you've damaged their, the temperature of their solid organs. So that's why you then have ganjen in Chai Hu Great Ganjen Um As ever, there was, <laughs> there was a bit of a, a point to that long tangent, but um, that's why you then have the next step, which is ganjen. In Chai Hu Great Gen Gen Gen, which protects the Yang with Tai Yin. And also with Tian Hua Fen Muli, you are softening and cooling down all these fluids. As they become more liquid and start to move down the Sanjia, they'll move down onto the earth and you need to start to metabolize them again. Um, and then lastly, you have Jiu Sao. Jiu Sao is a sweet moderation of fire, um, sweet moderation of wood, so protecting earth from wood as well um, and moderating any flaring fire as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very interesting formula of destruction. Already you can see there's a lot a lot you can learn from looking at the structure, which is, is really the case with all classical formulae. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's, it's really that, that Tianhua Fen Muli, which um, separates Chai Hu Great Gan Zheng Tang from the other Chai Hu Tangs and makes it so so good at treating that, that chronic Xiao Yang where things become locked up in the San Jiao, and especially very chronic viral conditions. Mm. This will break open the sand gel, help the body's immune response to really kick out those those viral issues. Um, it will treat very high fevers. You know, Chai Hu Great Jing Anjian Tang can treat a very, very high fever because, not because there's a massive amount of heat there, but because that heat's bound up in fluid. Mm. Always hang around longer than a dry heat and will manifest a higher temperature. Um, think about, you know, a a sort of wet sauna versus a dry sauna, or think about the you know the other analogy I always use is if you have a pot of water, if you have two saucepans on the same size flame, you fill one up with water and you have the other one with nothing in it. You boil, you you know you heat it up for ten minutes or so on, and bring the water in one saucepan to the boil, heat the other on the same amount. If you then turn the flames off and stick your hands in both saucepans, the one with hot water in will obviously burn more. The one with just air in it will still feel hot, but it won't um, it won't burn your hand as much. So a damp heat will manifest higher for heat and dry heat. Then if you leave those saucepans for 20 minutes, or let's maybe say not 20 minutes, if you leave them for, say, you know, 10 minutes and come back, stick your hand in them again, the one with just air in it will feel, you won't feel any temperature. The one with water in it, you'll still feel some warmth held in the water. 
So fluids have that ability to hold on to heat, and that's why a damp heat situation, such as the Chaihu Great Chikan Jeng thing, can um, manifest a very, very high fever, just because that heat's locked up in one place, and also it can go on long term. So you can see these very, very high fevers, and you can cool very, very high fevers, not through actually clearing heat, just through opening and moving the sand jar. Because remember, the way to cool down a hollow organ is to empty it. The way to cool down big fevers is not necessarily to clear heat, just allow the hollow spaces to move. Mm. Um, also, often the way these bound up fluids will manifest in somebody is through a lot of uh, kind of swollen, hard lymph glands. So, you know, these people with chronic viral infections, swollen lymph glands, it's very, very common for Chaku Gray Chikan Jeng Feng. You can take this even further, any hard masses in the San Jiao, um, you know, breast masses, you see um, being treated a lot with Chaku Gray Chikan Jeng Feng. Um, yeah, any, any of those kind of masses as well. Mm. And the, you know, the other thing about Xiaoyang treatment, um, like I said, this idea of clearing heat, um, which I've, I've talked about a bit already. Um, a lot of a lot of people see this kind of as real as heat. Actually, just a little bit. Of, the best analogy is um, a cigarette light. So it's a very small flame. If you hold it in one place in the body, it can create a massive amount of damage. Um, but if you move it around your body, it will generally warm it. And some minister of fire work, and to fire to descend from top to bottom, generally warming your whole time down. If it gets stuck in one place, it can manifest massive heat. And then a lot of the times this is diagnosed as excess heat, which needs a lot of clearing. It actually doesn't. It's just that the sand jam needs open. Another thing is that sometimes people will have Xiaoyang patterns. And the and this is especially true with chronic Xiaoyang patterns. You know, they've, they've had an unresolved infection, been there for a few months or even a few years, or they've got some congestion in the sand jam. And it doesn't show in their symptoms. It only shows in their pulse. Um, or even... Their yang can be so weak they can't even manifest the yang confirmation pulse, the yang show yin confirmation pulse. Then you give them some kind of tonifying formula and it causes them to flare with heat symptoms. A lot of people say, oh, this patient's too yin deficient to take any tonification or any warming. That's rarely, rarely the case. I mean, true yin deficiency is so incredibly rare. Um, you probably will, you know, you rarely, rarely see it, even in many, many years of clinical practice. What, what's actually often the case is the sand is a bit stuck. You've warmed up that sand so you've supplied the person with more imperial fire, so then they can make more ministerial fire, and then that shows any blockages in the sand You know, when, besides, when it tries to descend through the sand it gets stuck, flares back up, and manifests massive heat symptoms. Like I say, those people will often be labelled as too yin deficient to take warm curves. Mm. Actually, what all you need to do in that case is you just need to open the sand jar and move them. And this is very common again with Chaihu Great Chikan Jeng Feng. Either if your pulse skills are up to it, you pick it from the pulse straight away. And even if the patient doesn't have really clear showing symptoms, you first harmonize them. Or it's somebody who doesn't even have the yang to manifest that, that, uh, that showing pulse, you know, a bit like, let's say you have a, a heating system which has blockages in pipes but you don't have enough water going through the pipes to actually show the blockages so you warm them up you put water through the pipes and suddenly they get blocked that doesn't mean they've got um you know too much heat going through the heating system it actually just means it can't move so then you know that actually this isn't a problem of yin deficiency as such it's just that you need to open the sand jam so that any heat you're putting in can move so chaihu great chikan is a very very important formula which um which you'll see in a lot of those scenarios. Um, yeah, just understanding the ministry of fire of opening the stem jars is very important. Practice is something you have to do in a lot of patients. Yeah, I've seen you, you know, for years and years. Um, I think we started off in the formula. What's that, sorry? Yeah, sorry, you go ahead. I just thought we... I thought we started off with what's in the formula ended up with that. So <laughs> I, I, I tend to go off on tangent. No, no, there's no <laughs> tangent. I can, you know, I can see your systematic approach, and I that's why, you know, I love hearing you speak because you know your your metaphors are fantastic, and the depth of knowledge in 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 the in the pathophysiology and the physiological function of of these of these formulas are just exceptional, um, and it's just so detailed um, and just yeah so well educated it's just fantastic to hear um 
I'm always curious. Yeah, you know, we you. always see you. Um, you know, always see you use these formulas as a starting formula in clinic. So, even if someone's coming in for mm. you know long term, completely unrelated issues, they're not coming in for these symptoms, um, the standard symptoms. But obviously, you know, you're using this quite often as a as a beginning formula. Um, can you explain that a little bit? Like, I mean, I, you, you've explained it in the sense of, <laughs> you know, in, in the, the general context, but. You know, you, you, t you would you agree that you tend to see this very, very often when you first see patients to, you know, what you call like, like, harmonize these patients, get them, get them ready for different kinds of treatments? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because um, I think a lot of people nowadays, they do have a lot of unresolved infection. They do have a lot of congestion in the San Jiao. Um, so... And, you know, like we both said, this, this, you can often be walking around with that without actually showing symptoms. Um, it could have even been, you know, a flu you had last year, which never got resolved. And now all those symptoms have gone, but that damage to the San Jiao is still there. Because the issue with Xiaoyang is that it is the, the yang. Mm. It is the least yang of the yang confirmation. And the thing the body needs to regain its function is yang. And that's why Xiaoyang is so difficult to get out of. So when we say the body needs yang to regain its function, that's what a fever is. The febrile process is the body trying to regain its function or its warmth, mm. its correct temperature. And as we see with the showering fever pattern, it's alternating chills and fever. So the body tries to regain its function, it can't, then it collapses, and it tries mm. again, it can't, and it collapses. Um, but that can be so subtle as so well. That's, you know. that's just an example. It, it, can, it can be so oh, subtle. Yeah. Yeah. subtle I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be, it's not, it's, it can just be, you know, an inability to, to regulate your body temperatures. Oh, I'm feeling a little bit warm, I'm just feeling a little flushed, now I'm a bit chilled. I mean, with our, you know, with our temper, temperature regulation in all the homes and the places of business, like we, like you said, we don't really notice it that much, but it's just there lingering the whole time. Oh, exactly, yeah. And it, it doesn't even have to be there. You know, the Jingwei entry for Chaihu Guo Jigan Jiang Tang, where I think it's called Chaihu Jiang Guai Tang mm. in uh, Chapter 4, Malaria Disease of Jingwei. It says, English, uh, yeah. you know, Malaria Disease is mostly cold and no he or only cold and no he. So mm. that fever pattern doesn't have to be there. And that's, again, one reason why Xiang is missed so much nowadays um, is that I think people think that the alternating chills and fever has to be there. In Xiaoyang, it absolutely does not. That's not a key necessary defining symptom of Xiaoyang disease. The key defining symptoms are in lines 263, 264, and 265 of the Shang, mm. which is bitter taste in the mouth, a dry or sore throat, and dizzy vision. Um, then you can get, you know, no hearing in either ear, so sudden um, changes in hearing, redness of the eyes, fullness of the chest, and vexation, mm. and then like 265, wiry pulse with headache and possibly fever. Mm. Um, but it's those signs of flaring ministerial fire, which is bitter taste of mouth, dry throat, dizzy vision. And then those additional ones, you know, redness in the eyes and so on, can also be there. But it's those first three which are really important because sharing disease is manifests from ministerial fire, from flaring ministerial fire. So those are the signs that need to be there. The fever pattern doesn't, absolutely does not have to be there. So you don't have to have the alternating chills and fever. That's only when an acute febrile event has been triggered. I mean, that can go on long term, but it doesn't have to be there. But as you say, it can it can stay on long term, and it can be very, very subtle. It can be somebody who just feels a variation in their body temperature. Mm -hmm. It can also be hot flushes, menopausal hot flushes. I see so many menopausal women where you just need to harmonise them. And actually... Most menopausal hot flushes, you know, again, it's absolutely not yin deficiency because yin deficiency would not manifest in alternating heat. It would have to manifest a steady low-grade heat because if you're saying the heat is due to yin deficiency, you're saying water is not controlling the fire. Mm. Basically, the idea is, you know, the yin, the fluids are too insufficient to hold the yang down, which is water not controlling the fire. Mm. So if that heat comes and goes, there has to be a reason. If it's because the fluids come and go, well, then, what's the yin deficiency you know it's like why do they come and go is it when you drink water that, mm. that you've got more fluid so you can hold the heat and then that, that doesn't make sense because the yin deficiency is, is an absolute lack of matter steady absolute lack of matter so you're saying well then the, the fire is coming if you're saying it's water not controlling fire then it's water not controlling imperial fire your heart fire the heart's a source of yang if that heat is coming and going that means you're dying and coming back to life heart fire 
um, the Imperial fire is a steady fire, so that can't be coming and going. So any heat that comes and goes is ministerial in nature, because ministerial fire gets its heat from the Emperor, from the heart. So ministerial fire is any fire that has left the source of Yang, the, the heart, or the Emperor. And that's why it's unsteady, because it's left the, um, the source of Yang to warm throughout the, the body, or you can look at it as, you know, if you want, but, uh, if you want to use a sort of analogy of the emperor sitting on the throne in the in the palace, he doesn't leave the palace, he doesn't leave the forbidden city, he sends his ministers out. So he gives the minister a certain amount of power, and that minister has to go out and perform the tasks. Now that minister, or that minister of fire, goes through your body, has a certain amount of yang. If it gets stuck, it can flare, it can get very angry. But it doesn't have a constant source, so it will flare, and then it will collapse because it doesn't have steady power. So, for example, with your minister of fire, it gets stuck in your sand jout, it flares, but then it burns out, so it collapses. So any fire of an unsteady nature is minister of fire. So already hot flushes, it's not an imperial fire. Second thing, as you see in the Jingwei, um, chapter 22 under the Wenjing Tang line, actually hot flushes and blood spaces. Remember, dry wood easily catches fire. Um, blood spaces belongs to Zhui Yin, which is the Zongqi of Xiaoyang. So... Xiaoyang gets its ministerial fire and the motive force behind its movement, which is wind from Dreyin. So often, well, any time Xiaoyang is, um, is suffering pathology, it's because of it, it's Zongqi, because, of, um, because Dreyin isn't supporting it. So these menopause are hot flushes. Um, often it can be enough just to open a sand jail and allow um, that ministerial fire to move. But often, again, that you you may you'll often have to go in and resolve um, Dreyin. But you know, we'll stay on Chaoyang here for the moment mm, because Dreyin yeah, be a different yeah, topic. Next, yeah, I I do often, yeah, that's um, I do often find like menopausal women when you treat them for hot flushes, the you start treating them, and what happens is they actually start their periods start again, because what's happened is their periods have actually stopped prematurely, and that's blood stasis. So they have this backing up of um, blood in the system that then overly warms because it can't open it can't move and again going off a bit of a tangent ministerial fire comes from imperial fire um the imperial fire warms the blood the blood then warms the san jiao and we can see this in, in Jingwei, where it says the san jiao um is infused with blood chi so we get our ministerial fire in the san jiao from our small blood vessels in our tissues of the san jiao um, you know, we can say in a large sense, heart, which is imperial fire, gives fire to the pericardium, which then, which is then already minister of fire, to drain minister of fire, then that fire leaves the pericardium, goes out into the canopy under the lungs, and starts to rain down as minister of fire in the San Jiao. So the reason I'm going down this route is because if you're draining, if your blood, if you have blood stasis, that blood will warm up, and then if there's too much warmth in the draining blood, that will then move into the San Jiao, and will put more warmth into the San Jiao. Now that's fine, the San Jiao can move. If it's stuck at all, that will show signs of flaring in the fire. That will show the old looking children fever or hot flushes in menopause of women. So often it can be enough just to open the sand jar and move it. That can then allow the heat to descend. And I often find, like I say, when women's their periods will start to have hot flushes, and then the periods will start again. They'll have you know anything from one to three or four more periods, and then it will stop naturally, and they'll have no more hot flushes. So it's nothing about tonifying yin. Mm. Um, you know, clearing mass amounts of heat is actually allowing that fire to move properly and actually the thing that supports that fire, which is a movement to warmth to the blood underneath. Um, yeah, so those, yeah. that kind of and that's exactly alternating it. children fever. Yeah, also you see... I mean, in, Sorry, in, you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, it's it's really interesting because in Chapter 4, in the malarial, uh, in the malaria chapter in the Jingwei, it talks about Chai Hu Gui Jiang Tang, which is, you know, the pretty much the... The, the the same the same formula but it's called like it's for, for female malaria um but i'm i'm interested in your thoughts on time frame you know and and how to treat this and because i think you know sometimes you can be treating these these long these these conditions that are so stuck for such a long period of time they can be stuck for for uh, like in, for for women you know i've seen in cases you know they've stuck for their entire um uh, their entire life, you know, most of their life, most of their their um, menstrual life, and you know, do you? What's your thoughts on strong treatment 
short term versus sort of long prolonged treatments like do you think that how, how do you think the the that sort of stuck ministerial fire reacts to those different types of treatments does that make sense does that question makes sense yeah, I mean, when are you talk about any any showing and condition in general? Well, yeah, well, not any like in in the case of you know these um, these women you were just speaking about these menopausal women. Um, how long is the treatment? Like, how long do you think is 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 necessary? And what kind of strength are you talking about when you're talking about these formulas? When you say strength, do you mean dosage basically, daily well, dosage? Yeah, dosage, but also um, yeah, time frame as well. Yeah, um, I find the start to make a difference is not necessarily that long. Um, so, I don't know, obviously, if you're using bulk, it's going to be much quicker. Um, let's say if you're using granules, because a lot of people do, and that's that's kind of the slower form, so we'll start from there. Um, I find it's not uncommon that if you give somebody, say, a granule formula, you'll, you'll start to see changes within two to three weeks. Um you start to see good changes, and then after that, it's very, very variable. I mean, I'd say in general, to harmonise any chronic chow yang, if you're using granules, three to five weeks minimum. Mm. Uh, that's not to necessarily see change. You can see change in symptoms very, very quickly, but actually to get rid of the, the pulse, because that's the one thing you, you always want to change. Symptoms are one thing. Obviously, that's, that's the, about the patient's comfort, which is important, because that's why they're there. Mm. But ultimately, we want to resolve the mechanism, and that's shown through the pulse. So to get that that showing pulse to go away, three to five weeks in more chronic showing. But then there are some people where they just need much longer term. And I have seen, again, I'm going to step away from the the, the menopausal things that we're talking about here. But let's say chronic Lyme disease, I've seen a lot of patients where actually you just um, you just need to harmonise them for a long time. I've kept them on harmonising formulas for months and months, um, and they've been consistently getting better and getting better. But there's still that mechanism still there, and because there's just been so much damage um, through that through the chronic Lyme disease, you just have to continue supporting the body and restoring that function. And like I said earlier, Shao Yang is the most difficult of the Yang conformations to get out of because it is the lesser Yang, and body function is all about Yang. So it's a difficult balance in Shaoyang of actually the, the way to get out of Shaoyang is to move from you know a small amount of Yang to a slightly bigger amount of Yang to Yang Ming and ultimately to Tai Yang. But you can't just warm the person up because their Sanjiao has stuck. So it's that very difficult balance of gently moving the Sanjiao whilst also gradually increasing the warmth of, of the Yang, which is you know the greater in Chai Hu, greater Gan Zheng Tang does a brilliant job of that. Um, often in those cases you're going to need to start supporting Zhui Yin underneath by moving blood a bit as well in chronic Shaoyang but I've seen these patients where you treat them for quite a number of months of harmonising until you know you largely get rid of the pulse and you get rid of a lot of their, their symptoms and then but, you know in a few years follow up I found out they still haven't had a reoccurrence of symptoms mm. um, so some it, it really comes down to the individual person you should start to see results fairly fairly quickly but to start to really, truly harmonise chronic Chaoyang with granules, three to five weeks, but treatment can go on long to long potentially because it's just a, a difficult thing to get somebody out of sometimes. Some people will change quickly, others won't, and that's just down to the individual patient. Um, in bulk, obviously it will always go much quicker. Um, again, for bulk, one, two weeks of bulk to harmonise chronic Chaoyang uh, minimum. Acute Shaoyang, you know, somebody's caught that, but I'm cold a few days. And then, again, this, you know, this is we've talked about there's different discussions on what classical measurements mean. Some people say a Liang, you know, you're in the camp of one Liang, 15 grams. Um, other people are in the camp of one Liang, three to five grams. Ultimately, it's it doesn't matter which you say, because as long as you maintain the ratios of the formula, that'll be correct. And actually, you know, this formula, I think, is all in Liang. So the ratios will be exactly the same. Then it comes down to daily dosage. So say if you had to go one Liang, 15 grams, giving 120 grams of Chai Hu, um, what is it, 30 grams of, um, 30 grams of Muli, you know, 45 of Huang Jin and so on. You do that per day, that's a very good, strong, 
strong start in a chronic thyroid condition, um, you probably wouldn't want to continue, you know, very, very long term. It's probably financially unsustainable for the patient to continue long term like that. But, um, you know, if you were to go, say, 24 chai hu, 9 pong chin, um, which would be one again, three grams, um, that, that also works. You know, it's a little bit of a, a softer initial hit, um, but you continue, continue, um, you may have to continue a bit longer term with that. And certainly in um, more acute conditions, hang on, let me just shut the window because I'm going to be throwing the lawn outside. Um, <laughs> I'll be back in a second. There we go. Um, yeah, so certainly in very acute conditions, yeah, you want to go a bit stronger if you're doing bulk or, yeah. you know, even granules take um, more per day. And that, if you're doing one lean three grams, that just equates to taking two, three, four, five bags a day, or you're using the version of one lane 50 grams in terms of dosaging. The more acute, the more severe the condition, definitely go up in dose, absolutely. Um, yeah, sometimes in more long term, I've found that if it is really, really chronic, th there is an upper limit to where high, high doses become really, really useful. Um, I don't, like if it hasn't resolved after a number of weeks or shown real signs resolving after a number of weeks on, on a very high dose, then mm -hmm. you probably don't need to plug away at that kind of dose. You can just um, go down to a dose where it's still actually reacting because, again, there's that therapeutic window where it becomes um, – where, where it actually makes a change in the body and then above that where it actually stops being useful and starts you know, becoming excessive. And mm -hmm. so long as you can stay within that range um, – and can I ask you? Yeah. <laughs> can I ask yeah. you how you define? Um, uh, do, do you define chronic and sort of acute um, showing patterns? Are you defining those? How are you defining that? Um, you're defining it through symptom symptomology. I imagine the pulse is very similar for both conditions. I don't imagine it's going to change. It's going to be the same formula, but you oh, yeah, yeah, the pulse is the same. Or? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's so if you're in, I mean, the strict theoretical way to go about this is you'd say acute falls into the Shanghai category where you're still calling it Shanghai, so it's chronic falls into the Jingwei category where you're still call, where you're calling it malaria mm. because malaria in the Jingwei just comes Shaoyang. So Shanghai diseases are up to 12 days, strictly speaking. So anything up to 12 days you'd call acute, anything beyond that you could call chronic. Um, the more clinically useful, though, is if it's a recent fever. You know, if it's a recent, um, you 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 can use fever to uh, to um, differentiate because fever is the body's response to an external stroke. Mm. So, uh, in acute fever, um, so I don't know, within recent weeks, um, or a you know, a, a sudden, a recent change in symptoms within the last um, sort of week or week or two. Anything beyond that, you're kind of into the subacute. Mm. Um, but ultimately, it doesn't really matter whether you call it acute or chronic, because if it if the patient shows, you not really, because if the patient shows a chai hu gui, gui jigan jang tang pattern, mm. you give chai hu gui jigan jang tang yeah. whether they've had it for two hours or twenty years. But that wouldn't dictate the 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 pace in which you um, the dosage in which you give to someone. Like if you just want, if it's just Maybe, an acute yeah, pattern, I mean, if it's of Mm -hmm. Go on, sorry. No, you, you carry on. No, I was just going to say, if it's much more acute, you know, you can be a little bit more aggressive as opposed to a chronic condition that maybe just needs to be chipped away at over a long period of time. Um, yeah, I'm just, just curious on your thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Something that's more acute, you know, they've had a recent onset, they come to you and they said, oh, yesterday I had this fever, or, you know, in the last two weeks I've had this fever. Um, then yeah, you can hit that a bit harder with a with a higher dose. Whereas if somebody comes in and they say, "I don't know, I've had a chronic, a chronic fatigue, let's say, mm. for seven years," um, then you may not, you know, that may not be something where the shine pattern will resolve within a few weeks anyway. Um, so you may go at that a bit, mm. um, not not as strongly as somebody who's come in with a very very recent onset. So that's that's when it could make a difference. But in terms of the actual formula you prescribe. Then it's it's not so much of a difference. And when and when the chronic patterns aren't shifting, um, that you need to get a little bit more 
strength in the let's say you know they, they're going on and the patient says oh, it's just very very slowly getting better what do you what's your strategy do you um you know do you modify the formula in any way or is any other clinical um directions you can go from there if it's fitting all the obviously of, of your pulse system it's fitting your pulse system it's fit, fit, fitting the symptomology but it's just not shifting for the person what's your strategy then yeah yeah i mean if it's clearly the right formulas and you're getting a definite change in symptoms definite improvement um no adverse effects and fits the pulse but it's moving slowly then um then then a big thing is blood movement and this is all chronic show yeah because like i say drain is what actually supports Xiao Yang. Drain is a Zongqi of Xiao Yang, which means that, you know, if you look in chapter 74 of the the Neijing, you have the Biao Ben Zongqi theory of six confirmation, which we won't go to in depth now, but it's just the idea that, um, you know, the body is three paired, three sets of kind of paired qi. You know, you have Tai Yang cold, Xiao Yang heat. Um, so if Tai Yang is too cold, it's because there's not enough of its Xiao Yang Heat, Zongqi warming up Tai Yang. It's the same with Xiao Yang. Xiao Yang is minister of fire, drain is wind. If Xiao Yang is um, failing, it's because there's not enough Zhui and wind fanning it. So if you have chronic Xiao Yang, if you have Xiao Yang that's not shifting, you need to start supporting the Zongqi. Now you are doing that a bit with Guizhou. You are definitely supporting the warmth of blood with Guizhou in Chaihu, Guizhou, and Zhang Kang, and that's very important. Because the, the long-term use of Huang Qin will cool the blood because Wang Jin, like I said, it reduces that flare of Minister of Fire. When Minister of Fire flares, it hits metal. And lung metal is where the hundred vessels converge. So just going off on a bit of a tangent here, if you look in Tangwei Sini Tang, you see the herb Shishin. Now why would Shishin be in Tangwei Sini Tang? Well Shishin we typically use to warm the lungs, you know, when you get cold respiratory things, a cold way cough or um, you know, a lot of uh, cold watery stuff coming out the nose. So why would a why would a herb that warms the lungs be in Dangwei Sinitang, which is essentially a blood warming formula, it's a vasodilator? Well, it's because you warm the fluids inside the lungs, and that warms the hundred vessels to warm and expand, you know, the blood vessels. So the quickest way to warm the lungs, warm the blood, is through the lungs. Um, that's also um, actually yeah, that's why you know in a lot of the uh, um, sort of acute febrile things you can, or, or acute respiratory things, that's why you start to see a lot of, you know, when you get a little thick phlegm in the lungs, you start to see the breaking of blood vessels because the fluid layer gets very stuck, therefore the blood layer can't cool off. Um, so it's a similar thing, you know, the fluid layer in the lungs influencing the blood layer. Mm. So the flip side of that, the flip side of like the, the qi shin and dangue sin tang, showing us that the long lungs are a very quick way to warm the blood, it's also a very quick way to cool the blood. So through using huang qin, we're stopping the flare of minister of fire onto the lungs. Um, by doing that, we're actually stopping the warming of the lungs, so stopping the warming of the blood. You need to stop that flare of minister of fire in Xiaoyang, but this is what makes it so tricky to treat, because actually the reason minister of fire is stuck and flaring is because it's weak. So to fully resolve it, you actually need to strengthen the yang. So you, you actually don't want to cool the blood off too much with um, Huang Qin. So that's actually why the Guajir is very, very good in Shaohu, Guajir, Gan, Zhang, Gang, because you have the Huang Qin cooling the fluids around the blood vessels, yeah. but the Guajir actually keeps the blood in the vessels warm. So that supports the Zongqi of, um, of Xiaoyang, supports drain. But if it's still not resolving, then you need to start moving blood. Because, again, you want to support Zhuayin, but you can't overly warm the blood too much because that will cause more flaring if it's stuck fire. So what you actually want to do is start warming the blood, which supports the physiology of Zhuayin. It, rip, it supports that you know return of blood to the heart, um, which then produces strong ministerial fire from the pericardium and so on. So you'd start to think about incorporating like a guajer fooling one um, type structure. So adding in, you know, you've already got the guajer, add in mudampi, taoren, uh, baishao or chushao, depending on, you know, um, on whether, you know, again, there's debate about whether Zhang used uh, by Shao Chu Shao. Really? The other thing know, using Shao Yao, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll use the term Shao Yao now for the moment. Um, <laughs> but the other thing about Shao Yao is that it um, it will protect Thai in fluid. So there's always this talk of um, Chai Hu hijacking the yin of the liver, um, which isn't strictly speaking true. 
chai who doesn't hijack the end of the liver. It is a it's a bitter herb, so it's mildly drying. It's only mildly drying. It's not you know a herb you really worry about. But in slightly dry individuals, it can lead to a little bit more damage to the nutritive. And the, the problem is, in the sand chow, that minister of fire is contained within earth nutritive and earth fluids and pulled down. But there's also warmth within the blood, and any warmth away from the heart is also minister of fire. So you can say minister of fire within the blood. But the blood is made up of one other aspect. The blood is made up of warmth, minister of fire, and also nutritive. So if the nutritive of the blood is dried out at all, then that fire can escape and it can cause flaring of fire from the, the blood. So sometimes people give chai hu formulas and it causes greater flaring of fire. They say then, oh, the chai hu's hijacked the end of the liver. That's actually not the case. It's actually slightly dried the fluids of the spleen, you know, the yin of the spleen, if you like, but really the spleen nutritive. Because the first thing is, Chai Hu wouldn't hijack the yin of the liver because Chai Hu is a bitter flavour and bitter has no influence whatsoever on the wood element. Bitter flavours um, have an influence on the water element, they tonify water, they have an influence on the metal element, they descend metal, but more importantly they have an influence on the earth element, they dry and reduce earth. So sometimes if somebody's nutritive, you know, their earth is a bit dry, that mild bitter of um, Huang Jin, no, sorry, Huang Jin, well, Huang Jin as well, but Chai Hu, function can dry out the nutrients of the earth a little bit too much mm-hmm. and obviously a dry environment will easily get hot leading to greater flare of minister of fire so Xiao Yao, you know, Bai Xiao Chu Xiao will protect that because we know we use Xiao Yao when there is that um, you know like in a Xiao Zhen sort of thing when there's too much drying of earth nutritively muscles drying out causing cramping spasming and so on mm-hmm. so it will help actually um, protect the fluids of the earth to stop um that damage to earth nutritive again making you better able to contain all ministerial fire and then the other aspect of um where you're fooling when you know you've got your tower in helps move out any actual dead blood any blood that's left its pathway and congealed and there's no chance of actually using it again so that just helps to send that and then mood mp is pungent and more cooling so pungent flavors obviously tonify the wood element and promote that return of blood back to the heart and that fanning of fire, the generation of fire. But it's pungent and mildly cool and it has a signature, you know, a bit like a sort of blood vessel. It's, it's the skin of the the um, the plant. So it has that kind of slightly red sort of curled signature, a bit like a blood vessel. So it kind of helps keep the blood vessels cool. So while you're fanning that yang back up with Guajan, um the mood MP actually just stops any more flaring from the blood. Because the important thing to remember is you want to build yang but you want to stop flaring your fire because every time your fire flares, you actually cool off a bit, you lose a bit of yang. So it's this very, very delicate balance between restoring minister of fire but not actually losing it. So that addition of moving blood will support dry in um, to then help support showering. So blood movement is definitely a way to start to get out of shower yang. If the person's more cold, you can even start increasing gui and things like that. Mm. Um, that's, that's another way to help you you move out of, of Xiao Yang, starting to try and build the Yang a little bit more as well. That's awesome. You know, I, I think, you know, uh, yeah. I think with the, you know, this whole idea of harmonization and this perfect balance between flavors um, and signature um, and, and, you know, the chi of the herbs, I think, you know, it's so important to include that, that same preparation methods. You know, if you read... A lot of these um, uh, these harmonizing formulas, that's what they have. They have a harmonizing cook with them. So, you know, in this case, you know, you've got mm. um, you know, um, 2.4 liters down to down to half, down to 1,200, and then you take that liquid and then you harmonize the, the flavors as well. You know, there's actually that cooking element to it. And I think, you know, to have something harmonizing itself in, this, in, the, in the human body, it also needs to be harmonized together. The, you know, there needs to be a synergy of herbs cooked together, prepared together, um, which, you know, which he mentions in the text. And that's why it's really important to consider that information. Mm. Um, but I'm curious to, it says also at the end of it, you know, when the decoction's first taken, um, if there's mild vexation, take it again. When the patient sweats, they will recover. You got any thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, I've seen it in clinic quite often this? and you do see it a lot. Um, 
I haven't seen it on sort of the long, you know, lower doses long term, but certainly in the acute conditions and at higher doses, I've certainly seen this present. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely something you you see less with granules. You see less long term, like you say. You see it much more when you're kind of putting somebody hard with it. And you actually see this reference in a number of lines, number of lines which mention sharing treatment. Um, line 149 as well, I think, mentioned it. It says, you know, when when there's, when in um, old damaged person has fever and retching, shout shout tank signs are present, give shout shout tank and they'll be steaming, mm. and quivering, fever and sweating, by which the disease will resolve. It's also line, is it 98? Seven or ninety-eight, which says after taking Chao Chao Tang, you know there'll be downpour of fluids. Um, so th- these references to vexation, fever, and sweating. This is why a lot of the reason why Chai Hu was later labelled as a pungent herb because they'd say, oh, you know, diffuses surface. The labelling Chai Hu as a pungent herb is just is wrong. It's not pungent. It's bitter. Sheng Ben Chao Jing clearly states that. I mean, you taste it; it's clearly bitter. Now taste and flavor are two very different things so don't always go off what you taste in a herb for example would you is is pungent but it tastes incredibly bitter but chai hu you know is, is clearly bitter and it is a descending herb in the shen ben um but it um its flavor is very thin so it's also a neutral chi it's chi is emphasized so it floats and then descends so it does help open the upper helps open the lungs but it doesn't open the Tai Yang surface, so it opens Tai Yin surface, so it opens the lungs by mildly floating so things can descend. It actually is actually incredibly similar in its action to Ma Huang in that way. Ma Huang also does that. Ma Huang is a very, very thin bit of flavour. Mm. Its emphasis is on its chi. Its chi though is warm, so it floats much more violently and forces the lungs open. And that's why both Ma Huang and Chai Hu open the upper so liquids can descend. You know, like I said earlier, nine I forget line two thirty or two thirty one explicitly says that about the chai hu tanks. Um, but I don't think there can be any debate that Huang Chin, oh, sorry, Huang Chin, Ma Huang, opens the upper so fluids can descend. I mean, that's its primary purpose. It's a fluid-moving herb. And if you descend lung fluids, you descend the breath because it's lung fluids that pull chi down. Um, so where was I going with that? Yes. Um, <laughs> so it does kind of open the upper. <laughs> it does open the upper in a way. That's also why there's... You would never see a, a Chai Hu Ma Huang combination. You, know, mm. you either you either have enough yang to take Ma Huang or you don't. If you have enough yang to take Ma Huang, you're not in the showering situation. Chai Hu patients, if you give them Ma Huang, they'll get severe upward rushing of yang because the yang's already flaring up. The the strong without movement created by Ma Huang will create a lot of issues and you know a lot of cardiac issues, a lot of vexation resistance and so on. But anyway, that's a separate issue. Um, so yeah, Chai Hu Chai Hu will sort of float to mildly open the upper so that fluids can then move. That that accounts for the, the downpour that you see in line, um, what is it, line 97, 98. That's opening the San Zhao so fluids can move down and you get the downpour. That's one thing that shows San Zhao's open. The other thing about the, the sweating and the fever and so on is that a Xiaoyang patient can't have a full body sweat. A true Xiaoyang patient doesn't have a full body sweat. They can sweat from the head. They can get a bit of heat coming up to the head. But they can't have a full body sweat because they don't have enough yang. The one thing you need to sweat is yang. Because sweating is the body cooling off the blood. So if the blood isn't able to warm up, if you don't have enough yang, you can't have a full body sweat. Now, the two conformations which can have a full body sweat are yang ming and tai yang. So what it actually means is if you are on a showering form and you start to manifest full body sweat, that actually means your yang is returning mm. so you've moved from Xiaoyang to Yang Ming or Tai Yang which is a very very good sign yeah. the reason for this is because you've opened up the movement of ministerial fire and fluids um, you've decongested the San Zhao so then that Yang can move and regenerate and you can mount that full body febrile response and actually the reason why you sweat in a febrile response is because your body temperature is deregulated initially let's you know let's just talk about the very first point going from Tai Yang Yang Ming and so on so you get an initial strike onto your Tai Yang your body temperature is deregulated. Whether it goes up or down, the only only possible response your body can do is send yang to the area. You know, your body isn't that massively intelligent. All it can do is warm up the area. So this is why you have a febrile response. So you, your surf, let's say your surface is cooled down 
either you you go out into a cold environment and you cool off and contract, or you're struck by wind, which means you're protected and dispersed. Now, first of all, what do we mean by that? Well, protective emanates from the blood. It's the warmth emanating from the blood. And that's basically the layer of warm air sitting around your body. That's why, you know, when you shiver, your, hand, your hair stand up to trap more warm air, more protective, more of the warmth radiating from your blood. So wind dispersing protective base just means that warm air, air around your body is blown away. So anyway, your body surface is cooled off through one of those two mechanisms, let's say. The only thing your body can do is try to warm up again. So it mounts a fever. That fever pushes you up above body temperature. So then you open your pores um, and sweat off to cool back down to proper body temperature. Pathology happens when you can't actually regulate that. You know, your temperature keeps rising and then you sweat to cool down. Your yang is too light and it continues to float and you sweat more and more and cool off. Or let's say that you're more of a dry person, your body warms up, it doesn't have the water to cool off and continues warming up and you go to yang day. Um, a, a heat onto the exterior will do the same because when you get a heat onto the exterior, your body... Um, wants to keep your internal organs cool, so it will just push all of its blood out, which you'll create a massive, massive fever to try and cool off. But basically, um, once you're at Xiaoyang, you no longer actually have that warmth to, to mount a full body sweat. So it's only from the head. So if you have rebuilt your body to the point where you actually can produce that febrile reaction to warm yourself up again, um, that shows you're actually out of Xiaoyang, and then the sweating is the result of your body actually then trying to regulate your temperature. So the mild vexation you mentioned is... The beginnings of that is yang starts to come back but can't quite move yet because vexation is is a um yang ming symptom but also a showering symptom because showering is sanjak pericardium the yin organ of you know ministerial fire paired with the sanjak sorry showering is sanjak gallbladder the yin organ of um ministerial fire paired with the sanjak is the pericardium so whenever that's stuck and flaring that cause vexation the pericardium but also it's a yang ming symptom so the more vex you get the closer you're getting to yang ming um so initially you get the vexation as yang starts to build up and take it again that frees the sanjia further so you can start to regenerate more yang and then you sweat then that shows you're back out of xiao yang into um, yang ming or tai yang so that's why you then get those those kind of symptoms after taking it that's basically freeing up the system and moving you know moving back to a state of more yang that's the best explanation of that sentence I've ever heard, without a doubt. Um, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was gonna, I was going to ask you. So I've I've heard two different approaches to to getting someone out of um, this chronic Xiao Yang. So, um, you know, one approach is to to put heaps of you know tonics in there, and or just put heaps of warmth in the system to allow to make even if they are already manifesting um, and then to make it manifest further and then to harmonize it or to harmonize it and then to um, and then to support the like Jui Yin after obviously I know what you're thinking but what would you why would you uh, why would you not do the do the first um I don't don't think it's necessary. Really. You're trying to force. You're trying to force um, pathology out. You're, when you know the classical approach is like a vitalist approach. You're trying to support physiology, so you're never trying to force pathology out. You're just trying to restore physiology. And if the place where physiology is dysfunctional, you're having pathology is, is in the Xiaoyang mechanism of that movement through the Sanjiao. So first restore that, harmonize the patient. I know the you know certain schools like Thai Spirit School and so on mm. are, are very very much like the idea of just really really strengthening the imperial fire and burning through the San Jiao. Yeah, um, that that comes with a lot of discomfort. You know, it's very very uncomfortable for the patient. You can also risk burning off a lot of blood as well. You know, if you call massive flaring from industrial fire, I would say you, your first big. Going back to Chai Hu Gui Jigen Cheng thing is quite a nice segue. You know, we talked about the um, <coughs> the Tianhua Fen Muli. You get constant flaring of fire in the Sanjia. Um, that then leads to the heating up and drying out of the fluids in the Sanjia. Ultimately, if that continues and continues, the blood will start to heat up and dry out. And this is why in the malaria chapter, you see the mother of malaria. The tumours on the solid organs because chronic flaring of fire has dried out the um, 
the San Joe and eventually dried out the blood. Um, the other thing is, if you look in the malaria chapter, you see for taxation malaria, Chaihu Chuvan Sha Jia Gualo Tang, which is the Shao Chai Tang first modification from the Shang Handler, just like in a different dose of Renchen. But um, it's basically Shao Chai Tang minus Ban Sha plus Tian Hot Ben Renchen. And that means the person has quite a dry stomach. So taxation is a situation where um, you don't only have yang deficiency, but you have deficiency of yang and nutritive or yang in blood. If that person gets a Shao Yang flares, they're going to flare into a kind of hotter stomach type Shao Yang, a Shao Yang Yang Min, requiring Shao Hu Huang Jin plus Tian Hua Fen. So we can kind of reverse engineer that if we're saying that chronic Shao Yang leads to a Tian Hua Fen pattern of drying out of fluids in San Zhao. Um, then overly warming that person oh, and if you know if, if a taxation patient also flares that we can say that those patients who have tian hoffen patterns will go into in deficiency will go into drier earth you know into taxation patterns like a gentle effect pattern so if we overly warm and cause too much flaring up shall yang we can then risk drying out the blood further which you could say is fine you know once we've opened the san jiao we can start tonifying people as much as possible but then why do damage you have to resurrect later the other thing is that the herbs that you need to do that to really strongly warm um, imperial fire is herbs like futsa and good futsa is not cheap um, it has to be properly processed you know futsa if it's properly processed is perfectly safe um, but the the stuff which is well processed isn't cheap and the people who do that are often using it at quite high dosage um, yeah so I mean it's it's expensive, it's unnecessary, I think. Um, I don't think the results are necessarily that much quicker, and it's actually not focused on resolving the physiology which needs to be resolved, or resolving the pathology and restoring physiology which needs to be worked on at that time. So mm. you're not following pulse. Um, it's just a one-size-fits-all method to just burn through the same jail. So maybe it is very effective, I don't know. Um, but what I can say is this approach of actually restoring physiology, which is kind of why what we all, you know, we all say is the major selling point of change. Um, yeah, it's it's actually a, more of a, a, a method of matching body's physiology rather than the blunt, blunt instrument bludgeoning through it. It's like saying if you have a traffic jam, you could drive a bulldozer through it or you could gradually clear the cars away. Both leave the same and resolve one just has less less damage. Less damage, yeah. um, Marvelous damage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Laurie. Um, it's always a pleasure to listen to the way that your mind ticks over, um, and your depth of knowledge, like I mentioned, was is astounding. So I hope that um, you know people get a little bit out of this and, and and try to understand, and then they know where to um, you know. I think you're hopefully you're going to lecture in uh, in Australia um, at some point soon. Um, you know, I think most of our planes are um, in the desert at the moment, in some desert somewhere. And, but um, eventually we'll get them out and, um, and have you over again. But in the yeah, hopefully I'll be able to come back at some point. I hope so. But in the meantime, um, where are you? What's your, new, what's your next moves? Um, gosh, when, it depends on when... when we can all start traveling again and um, hopefully be able to do clinics in, in Europe starting from October. Mm. Where I can see how the situation unfolds. I mean, obviously I had to call off pretty much all of all of my travel for this year, mm. which, you know, isn't, isn't the greatest hardship people have had to go through and all this. So I'm quite lucky that's been the, the worst thing that's happened to me. Um, but yeah, um, like I say, October clinics in, in Europe, in Utrecht, um, and then I'll, I'd have to check my diary to see what else is on for the rest of the year. Probably some Poland, Germany, maybe. Um, like I say, the trip to Australia, we did have planned. I would have come back from it a week or so ago, but that was unfortunately called off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, we'll get in. Um, we'll put um, some details um, where people can track you down and ask you questions and figure out what you're up to. And um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Great, thank you. All right, mate. Well, you take care of yourself and um, stay safe. And we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, you too. And it's been, yeah, it's been good. Thank you. Thanks so much for your time, Laurie. We, we really appreciate it. We appreciate it.
appreciate it. Do appreciate it. Do appreciate it. Do appreciate it.